Good afternoon to all from the tutorial board of BuildUp portal. For the ones who are attending a BuildUp webinar for the first time, welcome. For our returning audience, thank you for renovating your interest. Just a brief explanation of what is BuildUp. BuildUp is a collaborative platform in the field of energy efficiency in buildings. It is continuously updated and it represents one of the key sources of information on the topic of energy efficiency. You can register and become a member of the community and you can also upload news, events, present a case study, results from a project and so on. I would like to invite you all to navigate the portal. In the Learn section, you'll find all the podcasts of the past webinars, so it is possible to listen to all the previous presentations. At the end of this webinar, the link to the full presentations and the file to the PDF presentation will be made available in this section of the portal. It is a pleasure to host today's webinar entitled Upskilling Building Sector Professionals, the Lichpin for an Effective Innovation Wave, European Green Deal, showcasing Sensi Scheme, which is organized in collaboration with the Sensi project. Um, so it is um, the agenda for today, um, uh, first of all, I would like to invite you all to contribute and participate in this webinar. You can ask questions by typing in the box on the right side of the screen. They will be answered at the end after the presentation. So uh, look, uh, let's look to the agenda for today. I would like to um, present the speakers. First, um, Johan Zingibl uh, from uh, CSTB. Scientific and Technical Center for Buildings, who will, who will introduce the Sensi project. Then, uh, Jana Benzalova from ENBE, Environment and Building Energy Efficiency, will present Sensi certified experts. Uh, then, Damir Dovic from University of Zagreb will introduce the Sensi training, why, how, and what. Then, Lauren Sokal, from Sokal Laurent Roberto will explain professional tools integrating EPB standards. And finally, Andrei Vladimir Litiu from RIVA, Federation of European Heating, Ventilation and Air Conditioning Associations, will present the Sensi online platform training and learning management system. So now I would like to leave the floor to Johan. Uh, so please, we can start the session. So hello, uh, thank you, and hello to everybody. Uh, I will open the webinar with a short presentation on the Sensi project. Uh, of course, my colleagues will then uh, complete uh, with specific topics in the following presentations. So uh, please allow me to introduce myself very quickly. As already said, my, my name is Johan Zengibel. Actually, I am working in H20 pension projects and on SEN and ISO standardization. This last point is very much important because SENSI is very much dealing with European standards. So my background is engineering in energy efficiency in, of buildings, mostly on building technical equipment. But what are uh, what is SENSI? Uh, uh, what are the key aims of the SENSI project? Uh, SENSI is a European-founded H2020 project related to the increase of construction skills in order to reduce energy consumption and the carbon footprint of buildings. Systematic is very much linked to uh, European climate change commitments and related European legislations like uh, the EPBD, uh, the Energy Performance of Building Directive. Um, the SENSE stands for SEN, Standards Certified Experts. The objective is to set up a European-wide training and certification scheme for ASHVAC professionals recognized all over Europe. Uh, uh, the SENSE scheme should run after the project as a self-founded business case in cooperation with uh, existing scheme providers. So here you see uh, on the slide uh, the census team. Uh, we are five partners from uh, five European uh, member states. There is a complementary background between us because some of us, some of us are scientific, scientific others more professional uh, orientated. 
So why it's a sensitive now? Because the European Commission charged a CEN, CEN stands for a European Committee of Normalization, to develop standards to facilitate the implementation of EPBD requirements in the European Member States. The CEN standards are, were voted positively in January 2017 and are published now all over Europe. To bring them into application, training is needed. And uh, SENSE is the first European-wide common training and certification scheme based on these mandated standards. So setting the scheme, uh, the SENSE ecosystem, the SENSE environment, uh, the European building stock uh, is nearly, nearly 35% of all buildings in Europe are over 50 years old, and 75% uh, uh, are energy efficient. But even so, renovation of existing buildings could reduce energy consumption by up to 60%. Only 15% of the renovated buildings includes significant energy efficiency improvements. So this is the reality of the European building stock on one, si on one side. On the other side, we have this uh, very ambitious uh, European commitments. For example, the EPBD asked new constructions to be nearly zero energy buildings before the end of this year. And the European Green Deal target is to be carbon neutral in 2050. So to bridge the gap between the energy efficiency, the energy performance of the actual building stock and the European targets, qualified building workforce is needed. Ashwag professionals will play an important role in implementing energy efficient solutions, especially in building renovation, where the HVAC systems are replaced or upgraded in shorter intervals. So it's, there will be a game changer and there will be new challenges for Ashwag. Indeed, reaching the European commitment is a new challenge and request increased skills to perform, to perform high quality, reliable and energy efficient renovation. There is a game changer because ASHVAC professionals must be able to provide reliable estimation of savings because people will look uh, after renovation if there is a real change uh, in energy consumption. Uh, Ashwag professionals must be able to design for performance and not only for compliance to building regulations, for example, and must also be able to communicate in the performance. This is why common indicators, for example, are needed. They must be able to improve significantly the energy performance, as said before, up to 60%. And to switch to low carbon renewables because of the 2050 targets. And this is why we said that also the upgraded installation should be 20, uh, 2050 compatible, which means that we, sh say we should avoid lock in effects in by sub optimal installation. Uh, and last but not least, uh, uh, this shows that there is a higher degree of sophistication and details needed, and this is why training is needed. So what is a sense added value? I will just pick up some of these most important topics here because we are limited in time. So uh, the sense training and certification scheme addresses a strong market request. This was shown by the support of the stakeholders of the whole building value changed by public authorities, including the European Commission. Qualification and training based on European standards is an advantage for recognition of skills among different countries and existing schemes. So SENSE will also create a level playing field for products European wide in order to reach technical neutral assessment. So this means fair competition between products and solutions. 
And uh, uh, an important point I will uh, mention here and then stop is uh, the European, European Green Day deal, which will be really the linchpin because European funding must be associated uh, to uh, European rules and associated to a clear standardized European building quality benchmark because it is not acceptable that the same building is evaluated green in one country and black in another country only because uh, of a different assessment, assessment method. So this is my last slide uh, about the market uptake and uh, the rollout uh, of uh, the census scheme. Classified professionals will only spend time and money for training and qualification if they can use the lessons learned in daily work if there is a market demand. So where we think there is a market demand. As explained already, we think that there is a real demand on increased professional skills for sizing, calculated and measured energy, cost calculation, uh, low carbon buildings. So the experts will be the same, the experts will be better prepared for these new challenges. Industrials could also be a front runner of the market demand because the sensitive training and certification scheme could be added to their professional academies. Then, in addition to be trained on their products, installers and designers will also be certified and may get credits, for example, for national schemes. The third market demand may be existing voluntary or mandatory schemes. So the practical rollout of the census scheme may be either standalone or uh, completing existing schemes. Thank you for your attention. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Jana Benjalova and I will present in my presentation how to become CENSE certified expert. So, CENSE is a piece of the energy performance of building puzzle supporting the implementation of EPBD by setting up a large scale training and qualification scheme to prepare certified experts able to use uh, new CEN standards for calculation of energy performance of buildings. This training can stand alone or can be included as a module in existing training scheme. And there is an intention to prepare a business case for training providers uh, already existing or new. And uh, this business case uh, de is depending on the demand. Uh, it means uh, mandatory or voluntary use of CEN standard. This is why uh, part of the business strategy is the promotion of CEN standards and CENSE will provide also feedback to technical committees for, for revision or improvement of standards if needed. Uh, European qualification uh, framework makes uh, qualification achieved more readable and understandable across different countries and systems as it defines learning outcomes in terms of knowledge, skills, uh, competencies uh, achieved by training. Uh, which are defined in uh, regulation and sense uh, training focus on two levels of professionals uh, according to this qualification and these are lower level uh, professionals uh, level four who are installers but also less technical uh, professionals like manager or policy makers and higher level professionals of level five and six which are designers engineers and architects so CENSA certified expert will gain recognition for performance, comparability, reliability because uh, uh, are using the best know-how based on European standards and uh, the demand drivers for such experts are industry who will profit from correct consideration of their products in energy performance calculation and level playing field for their products. Then education 
our training institution can introduce CENSE as a part of education on energy performance. Uh, certification accreditation schemes will profit from quality of experts working for these schemes and professionals will acquire new skills, know-how and profit from recognition by market. Sensor certification scheme is based on survey of existing schemes. Uh, it aims to harmonize with them as much as possible and survey of market needs. And the conclusion is that Sensor has a modular structure so that experts can be trained only on selected standards, for example, only for heat pumps or PV, that allows a different background of experts. For example, somebody is interested or skilled only in economics and also allows specific product-based interest by industry. CENSE offers training courses in a short format to enable acquiring skills on a step-by-step basis during longer period and, and not during several full days in once that can, could be advantage advantage for uh, professionals working in practice in this picture you can see operational and organizational structure of the census scheme uh, where is the, on the top the, the CENSE central scheme operator who will license training operators, they can be many, and they will implement qualification and certification of expert in practice. So the steps for experts uh, will be proving eligibility, undertaking training, pass of an exam, and finally, certification of expert and recognition in public list of experts. Uh, important to, to underline in this picture is that training uh, can be uh, performed for various purposes. So it is not always obligatory to go to exam and certification. This is uh, optional. So uh, there can be provided training for many other purposes and included in other certification schemes. So what does it mean proving eligibility? So it will be only recommended for undergoing training, for understanding the content, content of the training, but will be obligatory for certification to ensure the quality and reliability of census certified expert. And there will be uh, two criteria on initial competence of experts that is educational level, as I mentioned, level four, five or six and relevant experience two years during last six years. The training provides knowledge, skills and competence and it, uh, it is based on training materials uh, with uh, modular structure per standard and common templates, uh, handbook, Excel, PowerPoint presentation uh, that will be presented in more detail by my colleagues. And experts can decide uh, to be trained for dedicated levels. So there will be two levels, uh, lower and higher professionals uh, and uh, there will be different complexity of this training. The length of training is maximum four hours per standard, uh, depending on the complexity of the standard. Exam is based on set of questions and there will be more options possible for exam. Uh, it can be classroom by presence exam, remote by e-learning in e-learning platform uh, that is under development. And there will be also uh, perhaps option for self-assessment informative for learning uh, before the real exam. And the structure will depend uh, on the IT tool that uh, is under development and my colleague will talk about. So the eligibility criteria for certification are the initial education and relevant experience, mandatory training and successful exam. And after this certificate is issued, uh, 
based on common template of certificate which is proposed uh, uh, in the design you can see and uh, in this certificate all standards will be listed uh, and relevant which uh, expert pass exam will be highlighted uh, something like in driving license and this will allow uh, differentiation of experts according to to competence because it will be visible if expert uh, pass exam just for few uh, standards or maybe for all the standards and uh, to acquire uh, exam he can pass step by step so this will be public uh, this will be published in a list of center certified experts on website of central scheme operator so in in certificate uh, will be reported also the european qualification framework level which will be reported here on in this uh, table and it will depend on the level of training which will um, attend expert because there will be two levels simplified four and more complex five and six and on level of initial education so level six can achieve only engineer architects university degree and uh, uh, so this will be reported in the certificate so in my last slide, uh, you can see see uh, how a census scheme can be overtaken by any organization, existing training organization or new training organization. So there will be census central scheme operator who, who will license training operators. And the roles are for central scheme operator, uh, the quality control, the launch training, uh, maintaining, uh, master training materials which will be in english then uh, he will monitor survey um, the quality by feedback collection and issue certificate and uh, um, of course uh, public maintain the public list of certified experts and uh, as we'll talk my colleague about he will also run the uh, learning management system online e-learning and exam that is under development so training operators will uh, their role will be market uptake provide training localization of uh, training uh, that means that he can adapt uh, training to local conditions for example to translate uh, all materials uh, and uh, he will ensure that experts achieve learning outcomes which are required and uh, then he will be obliged to report to central scheme operator all these data to be issued certificate by central scheme operator who will then also manage this database uh, for the quality of all this scheme is very important the self-financing of the scheme so they, they are put uh, a lot of efforts in uh, in advertisement of this uh, scheme and in introduction in existing uh, national mandatory or voluntary training schemes that exist today so thank you for your attention and i give floor to my colleagues Uh, my name is Damir Dovic. Uh, I work at uh, University of Zagreb, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. So uh, in this presentation, uh, I will try to give you insight of our training materials uh, and to explain uh, why they are needed. Uh, in one part of the presentation, we'll uh, go to the examples and uh, you will, I will give you insight of our training materials uh, uh, chosen for uh, some solar systems and storage tank calculations. Uh, why uh, is the first question, do we need uh, energy calculations and training itself? Uh, in order to reach uh, already mentioned climate energy targets, uh, we have to uh, 
start with designing uh, and implementing uh, NZEM standards uh, in all new and uh, renovated buildings. So, uh, compared to the previous situations, uh, design of NZ buildings uh, requires uh, more uh, detailed uh, calculation because of a uh, very low level of uh, energy that is spent. So, uh, each mistake counts a lot in such a calculations. Uh, therefore, the new standards uh, are partially uh, semi-dynamics and uh, we see this as a step forward to the fully dynamic calculations uh, maybe in the future but uh, at, the, at this moment uh, we have uh, hourly level of calculations which is uh, suitable uh, to to uh, obtain uh, desired level of accuracy in, in uh, designing uh, such a low energy buildings uh, so uh, we uh, uh, the, the general opinion is that there is a lack of knowledge, uh, uh, not only in, in uh, installers but also also in engineers and all key players in this process. Uh, the standards are relatively new, and not well implemented, uh, not even the previous series of the standards, because of uh, their complexity. Uh, therefore, uh, if we want to properly uh, perform calculations uh, we should start with uh, trainings uh, and to teach people how uh, to use the standards how to perform calculations and all optimizations um, so the the new uh, standards uh, from the sen uh, in the in this area uh, they are uh, very numerous I would say that there are like 50 standards uh, in the field so in this project we are focused on uh, let's say one third of this or one fourth of, of these standards uh, so it's a first important step to energy calculations of the systems uh, for domestic hot water and space heating and uh, we will try to show through uh, these trainings how they can be used not only for performing energy calculations uh, for uh, standard purposes like uh, issuing energy performance certificates or verification of uh, the national minimum energy performance requirements for for issuing the building uh, permits and uh, similar things but also they can be used uh, for uh, sizing of uh, the systems uh, or, or the components or in the process of optimizing technical systems uh, at the design stage so this is very important when you deal with uh, NZEBs uh, because they are costly and uh, in order to properly design them you would need a careful optimization process uh, so, as already mentioned, uh, we are focused here to uh, the standards of the 15316 series that deals with uh, uh, calculation of uh, space heating and domestic hot water systems. Uh, but also, uh, we uh, have related standards for calculation of heat load, energy needs, uh, measurement performances, and etc. Um, so, uh, in all materials that uh, we have uh, created for, for this project, uh, we have the same structure and uh, I will go quickly through the main parts of uh, our training materials. So, first, uh, uh, in PowerPoint presentations, uh, we introduce people to certain uh, uh, field, uh, for example, in, in this case, you can see uh, that we talk about uh, the basic uh, heating elements and uh, a little bit more about the characteristics like temperature certification, in radiators, on how uh, how to calculate uh, uh, thermal output of radiators, independence of overheating temperature. Then we say something about uh, uh, the energy uh, demand in a building distinguish between uh, nominal power of uh, uh, heat generations that people may uh, find uh, during their energy audits or uh, what is the difference between uh, heat load uh, and what is the 
versus uh, energy needs for, for the whole year. Um, these are some things that people very often mix up uh, and we try to uh, address these uh, things uh, in, in our trainings and also to explain uh, some fundamentals and physics about, uh, for example, in this case, solar collectors. Uh, in the second part, we start with uh, uh, preparation for calculations itself. And uh, it's very important for user uh, of uh, future software uh, how to insert uh, input data to, to, fr from the available materials uh, for certain products. For example, uh, in this case, we have a uh, uh, certificate uh, for one solar collector's uh, type, uh, which is a solar key mark certificate. Uh, and we show people how to use uh, material, th this type of uh, certificates, any, any other types uh, to fill in important uh, input data to, to our calculation tools. Um, after this, we uh, explain briefly uh, calculation procedure. We don't explain each uh, equation because there are many, uh, literally hundreds of them but the most important equations are presented and uh, the, the, with this flow chart in this example we try to explain uh, calculation procedure interaction with some other standards in this case with storage module uh, when we calculate the solar systems um, then uh, the output values from the calculations uh, are discussed and explained this is important part uh, because this uh, output values serve for inputs to the other standards and they are all interrelated uh, uh, so it's important for people to to know uh, what they are calculating in each standard and how this will be used in some other standards and the very important part of uh, uh, our education is uh, our examples and work with uh, on concrete uh, uh, problems. So uh, for this purpose we, we developed Excel sheets and also handbooks that will be uh, used as a support to these spreadsheets and uh, this is a example how these handbooks look like. Uh, this is a, a sort of a calculation algorithm that should facilitate the use of uh, uh, Excel sheets, but also it helps people to understand uh, better the standards itself because we uh, here provide some uh, additional explanations and we have formulas uh, implemented here in the same order as they're uh, in uh, Excel. So these algorithms can be also used for uh, uh, software develop developers at one stage. Uh, this is an example of our uh, spreadsheets. Uh, I will later on show you uh, one example for calculation of storage tank temperatures. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, these are some graphical uh, uh, interpretation of the calculation procedures. They are also very useful for uh, educational purposes. Uh, and at uh, output interfaces, uh, users can uh, uh, plot all important uh, quantities. Uh, uh, these are output values from each uh, calculation. Uh, so they can monitor in a consider time period, uh, everything that is uh, interesting for them. And also one example with uh, outputs from, from the generator. Okay, and then, uh, at the end, we provide the parametric analysis, which we consider very important uh, in this process of optimization uh, that I mentioned before. Uh, and we present through these examples influence on certain parameters on the final result. In this example, with solar hot water system, we show influence of the storage tank volume on the uh, heat losses, uh, additional energy from the backup heater and, and the energy from collectors, for example. And also in another example, 
uh, you can see the influence of uh, the, the solar loop flow rate and, uh, for example, the consumption itself, how it uh, influences uh, performances of the, of the whole system. Um, at the end uh, of the training, uh, uh, trainees uh, will be given some uh, integral uh, task to perform optimization of the uh, system, technical system for, for a given building. Uh, and here is an example of, of such analysis. Uh, different uh, type of systems were uh, calculated and their delivered primary energies uh, were compared here. And uh, in this case, for example, the heat pump was a winner in terms of delivered energy, while biomass boiler and solar coupled to solar collectors uh, is a winner in, in terms of primary energy and renewable energy share. Uh, so uh, the aim of training is to be interactive, that uh, trainees can uh, work uh, on concrete problems and uh, uh, discuss with the teachers and, and the other trainees uh, of uh, results they, they uh, uh, have from their analysis. Um, and I will, uh, Jan already said what are uh, our training materials, uh, handbooks, uh, uh, pre presentations, spreadsheets, uh, also questions and answers, didactics for trainers as well. So I will just quickly show you how uh, these training materials can look like. And uh, yes, uh, I will just ask uh, organizer to allow me to, to go to uh, this, okay, materials. So uh, first of all, just uh, for you to, to have impression how these training materials can look like. And uh, this is example for, for solar systems. I'm trying to have a control, yes, but uh, it seems it doesn't, doesn't work yet. Yes, it, now now it works. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, in this first part, as I already mentioned, we show some fundamentals. In this case, uh, fundamentals on uh, radiation, solar radiation. Then we talk uh, about uh, solar systems and uh, solar collectors. Explain some. Uh, physics heat losses which is important to understand for someone who is implementing these systems about the measurements and how to read uh, product data uh, we also say about uh, problems of stagnation and uh, then we have i have i'm sorry i have to go very quickly because i'm running out of time uh, so this is a everything i was already showed you in presentation but yeah it, it takes uh, long to present all these things to uh, trainees and uh, i will just try to show you how our handbooks look like they are it, it doesn't respond at the moment yes now it it looks it works yes okay so uh the handbooks are as i already said uh sort of calculation algorithms and what they can be they can be used uh for better understanding of the calculation procedures and as well as uh as already said for making own calculations because they contain the formulas in the right order they should be implemented in a software. And the last thing uh, is a Excel sh Excel sheet. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, this is Excel sheet used for uh, calculation of storage tanks, and this is an input. Uh, 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 interface where people can choose different uh, solutions in this case uh, after this they 
we have uh, several uh, other sheets where a procedure is uh, can be followed step by step this is input series from other standards for example this method input contains all input values and uh, this is very nice uh, uh, part of uh, our spreadsheets where you have all uh, formulas inserted uh, in right order uh, with a link to uh, to the algorithms to to the handbooks so this is very useful for anyone who wants to follow step by step the calculation procedure and to have a look uh, in intermediate results then in method outputs we uh, summarize the most important uh, outputs uh, here is also output series for uh, all hours in a year with some plots there is also output interface where people can plot their results uh, in a certain time period and uh, uh, this is just short example uh, i will still one more minute uh, just to show you how the temperatures in a storage tank change uh, during one day so this is the beginning of the day when consumption uh, starts and uh, you see the the temperatures in a storage tank in different layers uh, starts changes uh, falling down uh, because of consumption and then uh, the the backup heater starts uh, heating up the upper layers this can be this can be seen in this uh, uh, step by step uh, presentation of uh, the procedure and in one moment uh, consumption uh, the solar loop uh, will start heating up the the tank this is a moment and you see the temperature changes this is the, the moment when the, the solar collector starts warming up the the tank uh, and uh, yes, the, the the temperature changes until the moment when there is no consumption, when the where the old storage tank uh, uh, becomes uh, at the same temperature. So I will finish here. Uh, I'm seated time two minutes. Uh, I'm sorry, and I will give the floor to my uh, colleague Laurent Sokal. Okay, hello everybody. Thank you, Dami. And uh, I'm Laurent Socal. I'm based in Italy. I'm a private consultant. I'm a partner of Sensei project. And uh, I'm involved in the standardization process, both at Italian and European level. I will show you something about professional tools integrating EPB standards calculation tools. So the background information is that since the year 70, we started calculating systematically heat loads. Then the worry was for energy need. Then we worried about primary energy and renewables. Now we care about primary energy, renewables, and carbon footprint for all comfort services, heating, cooling, uh, domestic hot water, ventilation. And in the meanwhile, building a system are, be are becoming more and more complex, new technologies available, and performance requirements are very tough. So calculation method for legal purposes shall represent all these things as they have to follow the technology development and be representative to evaluate correctly the effect of the various technology. So software calculation tools are needed to assist this process, probably since the time of primary energy and renewables. And what's, uh, why professional calculation tools? Uh, the designer has two tasks and need calculation. It has first to size, that is, decide the size of a set of objects and or devices so that you can provide the design objectives, even in the worst case operating conditions. And then you check how does the whole behave along a reference year of operation and check if you comply with legal requirements. And this task, you need first to describe the building and system. So a graphic input might be very helpful. You have to find data about all components, both building envelope and technical systems, so integrated database. And then you perform the calculation as required by standards. So you have to remember all the algorithms, and that's not simple without assistance. Then present results and give feedback, so a graphic output. Then check in compliance with legal requirements. So you might have also procedures doing the check for you. And probably you would like to compile standardized reports for legal purposes. 
more and more application for public authorities require an XML or some kind of file to support the application. So for APCs, building permits, incentive application, you might need this. So all these tasks can be enormously facilitated by appropriate calculation tools. And what was at the beginning? So the basic tool was a handheld calculator at the beginning. You have mechanical version and electronic version. Okay, totally flexible, limited computation capability. That's very elementary. And the typical application is just a rough sizing using a rule of thumb or a screen for mistakes. Then the next step is experimental tool is an Excel sheet. It's the modern version of the manual calculation. You've seen a lot in the presentation from Damir of how much care we, we took on Excel demonstration Excel spreadsheet. So the Excel is totally traceable. It has some interface capability and database, of course. It's hard to calculate an entire system. Uh, the calculation is low. It can be customized, but this requires very experience. And the typical application of an Excel is standards development, checking the standard is running, software validation, you can document test cases, and teaching and training, and calculation of simple cases. This is a use of Excel sheet. So next step is a professional tool, application software. So well-developed interface, it's fast, you, it requires little modeling skills. Some countries require validation for professional use or legal use cannot be customized beyond integrated option. So typical application is product, professional productive use and energy performance calculation of any type of building. Uh, simulation tools is the highest level of calculation tools. So Energy Plus, Transis, these are general purpose scientific tools. Usually the, the user interface is poor. You have to use add-ons or third-party interface. There is little traceability, a lot of black boxes, which is not very useful for legal purpose, not linked to databases, and long calculation tip. Typical application is research or design of specific comfort solution. Why EPB standards? It's because by design, the EN EPB standards were designed to be software proof and regulation fit. It means usable by a software and usable for regulatory purpose. So here you have the objective, software proof modules, they have to calculate correctly. So there are demonstration Excel. Tested link between modules, there has been a software tool, and we are able also to process several Excel together. Use for regulation, very important, all traceable equation and traceable options, even for the hourly method. Application software validation, then you can use a demonstration Excel to build and document a test case and connect with databases. So the type of input data. You've seen extensive list of data input, which is a link between software and APB standard. Without professional software, you can do massive production and use this for regulatory purpose. So it's a big investment. And the problem is, if you do not have a market, you cannot invest in a big investment. So are these, these standards going to be used? If, for example, in a country like Italy, this is already happening, and we are progressively implementing the EN EPB standards. So the software will be available. I can show you some screenshots here. For example, this is um, energy need calculation on an hourly basis using the EN 52016. And you see here the result. Here is the indoor temperature along the year, the hourly. And here you have heating needs. Here you are requiring power. And here you have cooling needs, of course. This is already according to this 52016. As well as, for example, this is an example of the help of the software. You have hourly profiles, and here you can, you can visualize it's not just an array of numbers. You can see a weekly profile, and you see this is an occupation for a house, and you see the occupation higher during the weekend, whilst during the week people are going on work and less occupation. So you can understand correctly what's happening in the software. And this is another example. For example, uh, technical systems. Here you have to support all the possible uh, configuration of a technical system. For heating, can be centralized, autonomous, the same for ventilation, domestic water. So you are able to combine together the type of system you have in your buildings, as well in general way, or detailed configuration for each system. Do you have a heat recovery or 
a, a heating coil on your ventilation system. And this is another example, calculation of operating condition. This is already done according to EN153116, where you can decide which is the configuration of emission and control. You can decide how is your generation system connected to your distribution system, how it is controlled, and you have the result operating condition depending on the external temperature so that you are aware of what's doing. All these kind of things are done according to EN EPB standards as it is, uh, of course, teached in our module about this standard in Sensei project. Calculation tools are just big calculators. You have to remember this. So who uses a calculation tool shall know what's happening and shall be in control. And the calculation tool shall give control, that is feedback to the user. It must be easy to use and give adequate feedback. And an example of what I mean by ease of input, for example, describing the building, it's better to go on a 2D and just go up, up on a drawing and just uh, draw your building in 2D. And if you want to know if it is correct, then you might have a view automatically constructed in 3D so you are aware that your shading is at the right height or that the windows are in the proper position and that the neighboring buildings are in the, at the right distance for the calculation. By the way, this is Google Maps uh, in, as a background. And database, for example, of course, the software can help you because for your, for your, um, how to say this, it is um, the, the last layer of the concrete. So you have a lot of options and you must be able to select the right option. And here you have the, you have the two aspects, the software, which is supporting you with the database, but you must be trained to, re to recognize which is the right choice for your building. And here is the same for the boiler, because you have a database, but you have to know which model, which type, which options. And here you have an example of feedback. What is the software doing? So don't limit yourself to just looking at the last figure at the end of the calculation. Have a look at the intermediate results that are showing you what's happening and if your results or calculation is plausible. To do this, of course, you must have training and experience. And to illustrate this relationship between software and a designer, uh, I would use an example, a principle, parallel asymmetric processing. What's that? This comes from the problem of safety. Uh, sometimes you have tasks that have to be safe. For example, controlling uh, traffic lights. You can imagine what might be the consequence of having a green on all sides. So when you have critical tasks, we speak about safety integrity level. And the basic approach could be two identical PLCs, programmable logical controllers, in doing the job in parallel. This protects against hardware failure, but it doesn't protect against a software failure. If there are mistakes in the software, both processors will do exactly the same mistake. A better approach is using two different PLCs with a different software, which shall produce the same results and commands. So you protect against hardware failure and also against software mistake, because it is very unlikely that you will do the same mistake, doing the same effects on two different machines programmed by two different persons. And here is parallel asymmetric processing in action. This is a system designer, and here is his calculation tool. You have processor one, which is a software. It's strictly obeys to input an algorithm. It has no fantasy, no initiative. It has no awareness. You can say that your, 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 pilot, your boiler is a 10 megawatt. He wouldn't uh, mind. It's damn fast, can handle a ton of details, but shall be programmed and doesn't learn from experience. Not yet. Let's see in the future. And processor two is a, your brain. It evaluates the input. It has fantasy, initiative, can invent new solution, should be aware. It's damn slow in calculation, can handle few number, and shall be trained because, and he learns from experience. And of course, the best way to build up expertise with time is when you make an experience, you must be trained to put your experience in the right uh, uh, location so, and to understand what's happening so that you are, and in this way, you will 
gain expertise with time. For optimum performance, they have to work in parallel. And the critical issue is the designer being trained. So, and another warning here, just in short, because I'm running out of time. Of course, we, we, we said that the professional software is needed and it has to be to have a good input and give you feedback but who uses the software should be prepared and trained to understand what happens. And training is a key to maximize the benefit of experience. And remember, procedures and software do not replace expertise. Software are just tools for experts, not replacement of expertise. So just as a conclusion, calculation tools are needed to support HVAC design activities, so we need software. Setting legal requirements, requires traceable and comprehensive methods. EPB standards are designed to be software proof and unambiguous. Professional software is the right level of tools. A market does exist, so software will be developed. Software is a tool, it has to be user friendly and give clear feedback, but professional using software tools shall keep control of calculation. So they need experience and training. So please follow Sensei training. Thank you. Hello everybody, Andrei Vladimir Litsu here from Riva. Uh, as I'm last but not least, I'll try to speed up. Uh, so uh, you can learn more about myself on LinkedIn and I actually encourage you to connect. Uh, and as such, you can uh, keep up with uh, all the developments uh, of Sense activities, but also um, further activities uh, related to the set of uh, EPB standards, the energy performance of building standards. Uh, my presentation is very, I would say, niche. It uh, covers the, the training delivery part. Uh, my colleagues have shared um, all the other uh, information that's uh, relevant for you to understand uh, what Sense scheme is for and uh, the promises uh, it has to deliver. And especially now that we are in this uh, phase of uh, setting up uh, a renovation wave, uh, it's uh, obvious, uh, I, I guess now after you have seen the previous uh, presentations, that uh, the, the skills are something that uh, is essential. So it would not be enough to have the finance for it. Uh, the technology is already there. Uh, legal requirements are stricter and stricter, which is, uh, of course, uh, uh, to achieve the, the climate targets. Uh, but when you actually deliver this in practice, you need to have skilled people to, to actually deliver it so that you ensure that the buildings will actually perform. Before I dive in the Sensei um, training, uh, I would say delivery options uh, that we have now and will uh, have available soon, um, I just want to highlight, uh, this is an extract from our website, the Sensei website, um, together with other uh, Horizon 2020 projects and other initiatives, uh, we have built a community around a set of EPB standards. So uh, please go ahead and join. As I said, you can also connect with me, but if you want to go a step further, you can join this EPB standards group uh, on LinkedIn and uh, of course the build up uh, thematic topic um, on this subject. And uh, if you want in-depth uh, information on the set of EPB standards, uh, please uh, try to go ahead uh, and uh, look on the website. Uh, by the way, that issue that you just saw is because I've inserted links uh, in my presentation. So as soon as the PDF will be available, you can just click your way through. So you don't, don't need to type anything. You just click and uh, you can access uh, the information I'm providing here. Now, uh, getting uh, specific, uh, so something that will be accessible now in the coming months, uh, this is the Sensei Online Pilot Training and Certification. Um, and uh, this is something we are experimenting, as uh, Iyana already shared. Uh, we will also have a learning management system for the commercial training when we get to that uh, stage. And uh, this is to provide, um, I would say, flexibility 
depending on how uh, the national training operators are delivering the training to be able to do it in a classroom maybe it's now less obvious with the strange times we are uh, going through but he should also be able to have uh, a blended learning so part of it in a uh, online version and then part in a classroom but then it can also be a full online experience and for this purpose we have the online pilot training uh, which is meant to collect feedback from the market, uh, from you as building professionals, uh, those of you that are uh, attending here, um, to, to help us better uh, develop also the learning management system. Uh, this is very helpful and in, uh, of course, return, you would get uh, state-of-the-art knowledge on two uh, EPB standards, uh, on heat pumps and on measured energy. But just uh, click on these links and uh, you will find more information there. It's uh, very easy to register. Uh, as I said, you can uh, just uh, go uh, through uh, via these links and you can also see the, the form. So it's very basic information uh, that's uh, easy to, to provide. And of course, uh, we are GDPR compliant in handling uh, this uh, data. Now, having a, an outlook. So we are in the process of developing a learning management system uh, to support the delivery of uh, the training material. And from the beginning, and that is in 2018, when we started our activities, we already knew that we need to have a blended approach. And this is mostly due to the specificity of the construction sector. Uh, a majority, around 70% of companies, and yeah, in some countries even more, are SMEs. So each day taken uh, on training, uh, it's a day uh, in a way lost in business and that's why we we felt that we should at least provide this feature that at least the listening part of a training you can do that uh, self-paced in your free time or whenever possible and in uh, bite-sized chunks you don't need to follow it all at once depending on how much time you have available but then of course you need an interaction with the trainer and the exchange between peers which is invaluable and that one, uh, of course, you can have in a classroom, but um, uh, with all the platforms available today, you can also have it somehow online. But you need this interaction. You cannot only look at uh, recordings and uh, become an expert on it. And of course, uh, technology is very helpful these days and it can have its limitations, but it also provides some advantages that you can really tailor uh, the, the courses you follow to your needs and uh, make them very specific and meaningful to your day-to-day -day activities because in the end that's the whole scope of course uh, we want to advance uh, our building stock in Europe to make it uh, fully sustainable but uh, of course maybe you don't need to know everything of this uh, process how to transform a building uh, just some that is really specific to, to your activities and uh, regarding the blended learning, uh, of course, this is an extract from uh, a public source, but it's just to highlight like uh, the steps that you would uh, need to follow. And the basic the foundation uh, can be e-learning, but then, as I said, you still need the interaction uh, with the trainers. Otherwise, there's a lot of insights that uh, could be easily lost uh, in a recording um, and misinterpreted uh, at times. So that's really of, uh, of added value and essence. And um, at, uh, at, at, a, at an ending note, so to say, uh, Sensei Scheme is uh, developing this uh, uh, way of attaining knowledge on the set of EPB standards. And you know the why behind that uh, after the previous presentations. And then it will help you uh, deliver on, on the how and what so we can actually make this transformation happen uh, to our building stock. But it's always something relevant to reflect upon that uh, we are digitizing, digitalizing, and ongoing the digital transformation when it comes to, to the construction sector. However, when it comes to training, uh, it seems that we are somehow maybe uh, behind. Uh, perhaps now in these times, uh, we've had to transform the way we teach in universities, in training institutes, because we were uh, physically distanced from each other. Uh, so we see that it is possible and it might be 
even more productive, but at least equally as productive. But why don't we think of this even further at a, a general level? Could we have this when it comes to buildings in Europe? Why don't we try to somehow uh, coagulate everything that's out there in the market and work together as a united union and try to make this happen uh, in a coherent and, uh, I would say, um, converged way uh, at the European level. Uh, that was it uh, from my side. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you all for your presentation. So we can start the Q&A. Um, let's start with uh, a question from Johan. So some of the EPB standards are already also at ISO level and it looks like all of them will become also global standards. Does Sensi scheme also consider outside of the EU activity? Anyone can answer anyway. Uh, okay, I will start to answer. Uh, yes, it is right that a lot of standards, uh, uh, especially on the building envelope, uh, are already on the ISO level also. So we have EN, European norm and ISO standards, so they both are uh, identical. Uh, and of course, we have also, for example, uh, we have also some um, re uh, requests from neighborhood states already in Europe to use the census scheme. Uh, so yes, uh, if uh, the ISO standards are E and ISO standards, uh, then it's uh, it's okay. It's not a and it's not a problem at all. So they can it can also be used outside Europe, and. Um, uh, please don't no, do not forget that uh, it is not only standardization; it is also knowledge, as has been shown by Damir. So, um, so even if they are not used in other countries, I mean, uh, what we are teaching on the basic principles and know-how and things like this is uh, available and available all over Europe and outside. Thank you. Um, so, uh, another question uh, for Laurent. Uh, will there be a software also at the European level, maybe following an open source approach, for example, like Typo3 for websites and Moodle for learning management systems? Well, uh, maybe. The question is that uh, developing such a piece of software is uh, a significant investment. Of course, if some countries start using the EN EPB standards, like Italy starting, for example, you have um, a European, in fact, you, you will have a European software. And if there are not too, too much differences between um, the method in the, in the different member states, it could, be, could happen with time. Probably it's just a question of time. And the um, open source, uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the question is: It is uh, it is a, a huge work to develop all the interfaces and to implement all the algorithms for possible technical system. And these kind of things are also changing. So uh, you have then to maintain and to assist um, the, the software which has been issued. And the last point is that, of course, this is software will be used by professionals and professionals have both the sizing and the energy performance calculations. So now the energy performance calculation is part of the design, but it would be nice or it is desirable and it will be end up this way, that you are using the same so description of the building, the same software for both design and energy performance. So it, it makes things a little bit more um, complicated to support this from a, from, to, to make things comprehensive. The good news maybe is also that uh, ENEBB standards, which are covered by the Sensei uh, scheme, are approaching the calculation methods for design and energy performance. So there is a good relationship between the two. So it might be simpler in the future. And that's all for me. Thank you. I actually got another question for you. What is the impact on the user of using the hourly instead of the monthly method? Nearly nothing. 
or I mean the EN EPB standards have the same um, input, uh, so, 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 so the hassle for the user is describing the building and the technical systems. And if, the, if you use an hourly or monthly method, for example, the description of the building is exactly the same. So um, there's no difference for the user, actually. It might be even simpler, quite simpler, to handle for example, technical systems. Now we are using, we want to calculate ventilation, air conditioning, lighting, and all these technical systems might have differences in the, in, the, in the time schedules. And if you have to handle this on an hourly basis, it's quite simple. You just list your schedules. If you have to calculate the interaction on a monthly basis, this is quite complicated. So actually, no, there's no difference for the user the user will just benefit of a more flexible tool when using an hourly method. Oh, thank you. So let's move on with another question. Um, uh, this question is for Jana. So this would provide a new wide recognition of skills which would enable easy movement of qualified building professionals based on needs. In addition to language, are there perhaps other national level limitations? For example, would a certified expert in Slovakia, if he speaks Italian, be able to easily start working in Italy, maybe requiring, requiring training only on some national specific layer? So, um, the sensor, the main principle is the modular structure, so it is per standard. And uh, as I said before, there will be possible uh, localization of the training materials to national languages. Uh, so uh, there will be training uh, operators who will organize training in national language. But it is not obligation for expert to attend uh, in training in national language. He can attend training uh, organized by any training operator and also pass exam because exam will be a special session so that uh, expert who for example doesn't pass successfully exam uh, after training so he can apply uh, for exam uh, any training operator so there can be possibility to work around Europe, but also to be trained and um, certify all around the Europe. So the main idea is that there will be certified experts uh, working around Europe. <laughs> so I hope this was answer on your question. Yes, thank you. Um, so and the question for uh, Damir. Um, is it possible to use developed spreadsheets for performing integral energy calculation of building envelope and technical systems? Um, yes, thank you. Uh, to some extent, uh, maybe you can you can use uh, uh, for simplest cases. Uh, as already Laurent said, uh, for more complex uh, uh, systems and buildings, uh, you would need a tool. So the main purpose of uh, these spreadsheets is uh, to perform uh, trainings and uh, some parametric analysis in uh, one part of the uh, system. But uh, for overall calculations, uh, I would still recommend uh, the, the softwares uh, which are at the moment under development, as we saw. Thank you. Um, I got another question for you. Um, okay. How, how can you use energy calculations for sizing and optimizing the system component? Uh, yeah, uh, as I shown in in the example, you see uh, in each uh, time of the day, uh, each uh, day of of a year, what happens with your system. So uh, you can see uh, if your, uh, for example. Uh, 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 boiler if you have a boiler or solar collectors can provide enough uh, energy to the system in, in a certain moment or if they provide too much energy uh, 
uh, if they, for example, in solar collectors, if they produce some overheating. So this is the way uh, how you can uh, decide if your uh, uh, the power of your boiler or a number of collectors or storage tank volume are appropriate for your system. So they can be used for uh, right sizing, uh, which is a more advanced method than any uh, of uh, methods that we already use for the uh, sizing. So this is one of great advantages of these hourly calculations. Oh, thank you. Um, another question, maybe for you, Anne. Uh, Sensei is focusing on a heating and water-based cooling system. Is there an intention to extend it to other aspects like the building envelope itself, to ventilation or lighting? Uh, yes, uh, there is a clearly intention to include all of these aspects in the second phase. Because, of course, if you want to make a global and a holistic approach of the building, you have also to take into account uh, this type of uh, systems. Uh, just to explain why we started with heating and renewables, like thermal solar, PV, and uh, we have even on-site windmills. Uh, it is because there are several reasons, but also because uh, heating and domestic hot water is still the major part of energy consumption in buildings in Europe. And uh, yes, uh, this is why uh, we started with this. And uh, we also think that, uh, for example, uh, that as, as I said in my presentation, ASHRAC professionals, there will be uh, a game changer and there will be uh, new uh, things, uh, new challenges for them. And this is why we also included, um, for example, uh, cost optimum calculations. And um, the overarching standard, the 52,000, which is an E and ISO standard, by the way, is already included in the SENSI and training certification scheme. So you can, uh, uh, with the training in SENSI, uh, you can come out also with uh, common indicators, which are related to the uh, global uh, uh, global approach of the buildings. So clearly, yes, uh, SENSI is the first step and other steps uh, should follow. Um, so this is my thank you, okay. Yeah. Um... A question for Andre. Um, so the training material shown was in English. Will the training at national level be also in English? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, yes, uh, Ziana already mentioned now in one of the, her answers. Um, indeed, um, uh, at at EU level, at uh, yeah, at Europe level, let's say uh, there is in English everything because also. The, the set of EPP standards are developed in English, and this can um, make the whole process easy because, of course, uh, the more these standards are used and uh, applied, the more people get trained and apply them, uh, and the sooner the softwares are available uh, to swiftly apply them, uh, the more knowledge will be, uh, I would say, uh, further surfaced uh, and improvements will be made. And that's why at EU level, let's say it's in English, but then as soon as you get to the national level, uh, especially in the construction sector, you need to, to, to translate everything uh, to the national language. You cannot go in any other way. And uh, that's how uh, the architecture of the learning management system is thought of uh, to comply with this and to make it uh, a very easy experience so you would have one account as a uh, building professional interested in the training you could opt just for the training so just to attain the knowledge and then you can also get certified if you want you can take the exam it's a personal choice depending on your uh, desire and um, then you would have access and you would see uh, all the training available in the different languages uh, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but this should be as easy as possible for, for for the building professional to have access. And that's why I guess we have this food for thought. Uh, if there would be such a learning management system for buildings in Europe, um, wouldn't be nice that it covered other aspects of a building performance as well to have 
the least effort for a building professional to attain knowledge and also get certified. And this means also joining courses with uh, existing uh, uh, training uh, provided by industry or by uh, universities and also, of course, voluntary certification schemes. Thank you. Um, someone asks, uh, when is the training provided and for how long? And also the cost of the training? Okay, maybe I will answer. Until now, it is uh, uh, it is not uh, defined clearly. Uh, so we know how it will start. Uh, so official training will start uh, after the end of the sensor project. Uh, as already mentioned, uh, there will be a, there sh should be a self-founded business case after the project. So the project will end. Uh, in uh, November 2000, in the end of 2020, so we will start in 2021. Uh, how, what will be the costs? Uh, 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 it will depend on who will be uh, uptake uh, the training scheme. For example, uh, in my presentation, I, I very uh, quickly showed that there are different, different possibilities of uptake. So for example, if it is uh, for professional skills, if it is uptaken by, I don't know, a national, uh, existing national training organization. So the price will be fixed by them, I think, in each country. But, but we have still to think about, but uh, the idea is that uh, maybe there will not be uh, uh, the same price all over Europe, which is quite understandable. Uh, uh, there could be also training for free. For example, if it is taken, if it is associated, for example, as I said, to, a, uh, in, to an industrial. So, for example, uh, the industrials are training today installed in the building academies. So maybe uh, it, if it is associated, uh, the training fee will be paid globally, for example, by the industrial. And uh, uh, each trainee is, uh, is no cost for it for him. So you see that uh, it not all is fixed, but uh, you see the different options. Thank you. Um, can you please recall the calendar foreseen for the implementation of the project? What provisions for the long term after the H2020? Anyone can answer. I will leave it to my colleagues, otherwise. <laughs> Okay, I will answer first and then my colleagues can complete. As I already said, uh, uh, so the so official start of the self-founded uh, uh, and sustainable project will be after 2020, so in starting in 20, uh, 2021. Uh, and then uh, we hope uh, that uh, it is ongoing for a long time because I think that uh, there is no Sorry, <laughs> there is no uh, so training and training of professionals. I think it is a never-ending story. I, I, I'm, I, I hope I understand the, the question well. I would uh, just complete that uh, the project is ending in November 2020. So already in December, there can be some uh, really uh, official training. <laughs> so perhaps end of this year, there is possibility to start. Well, so it is clearly you. depending also, it is it is really depending also on, on the rollout and uh, the market uptake. So it depends, I think uh, it will start it earlier in countries where the sense standards are clearly linked uh, to uh, 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 the official building codes and building requirements. So Laurent, he, he gave the example from Italy. So I think in Italy it is maybe already started uh, by other training providers. Uh, I know that in the Eastern European countries or Middle Central European countries, uh, they are uh, building regulations are mostly based on the European standards, as in Croatia, Slovakia. So. Uh, uh, in these countries, maybe it will also be faster than in other countries, as in 
in the, I don't know, in, in France or countries like this, which are today used not so much yet as a European standard. So it is, you cannot give only one answer. It is uh, really related to a little bit country spe specific and related to the market update. And I could give just information that we already started with trainings, but for free in the frame yeah. of the project. And it was training organized December in Zagreb University. And uh, the it was training for accredited experts who got the official credits for attendance. And there was other training in February this year in Italy, also with uh, organizing collaboration with the local association of engineers. And they also acquired credits for mandatory continuous training of registered professionals. And there was also planned uh, to be organized uh, training for accredited expert in Slovak Chamber of Civil Engineers in April, but it has been postponed or cannot be now organized. So there is already interest, so we already started, but uh, we understood your question as when start the official commercial training. Thank you for uh, all this information. Um, I would um, finish the Q&A session here. Um, thank you for your presentation and uh, thank you for all the people who attended.